We're joined now by Larry Robinson, former political counselor at the U.S. Embassy in Islamabad. Uh, Larry, any thoughts on motives? Uh, we have these conflicting reports who may be behind this. Uh, what are your thoughts on all of this? I think the, um, the statement by the uh, Pakistan military that they had intercepts of uh, people conducting the attack, talking to their handlers in Afghanistan, sounds the most plausible to me. Uh, there were some thought in initially that it might be um, Baloch nationalists or, or separatists, but this is totally different from their modus operandi. I don't think they've ever used suicide attacks before. Um, there are often conflicting claims in a situation like this, but if what the Pakistan military is saying is true, and I think it is, um, then this would be a kind of a franchise operation between the Islamic State leadership in Afghanistan and a group called lashkar e jangvi which normally goes about its business inside Pakistan killing Shiites, mm. a very sectarian organization. But they have cooperated, cooperated with or at perhaps rented themselves out to al-Qaeda in the past. Uh, some people may remember the murder of Danny Pearl, the Wall Street Journal reporter in 2002, where he was abducted by one group, Jaysh Muhammad, I believe it was, which is mo mostly focused on Kashmir, held by Lashkar Jangvi, and then murdered by Al Qaeda itself. So these groups are constantly shifting around, forming alliances, breaking up, uh, cooperating selectively and sporadically. Well, add to that, Stu, what you already brought up the, the nationalist movement uh, that, that's going on there. Um, Describe this area for us. Uh, I know that it's, it's been, uh, there, in fact, uh, Modi, I think, in August was talking about uh, the Baluchistan and, and uh, <laughs> making some claims against Pakistan. I mean, we already see a flashpoint with Kashmir. Talk to me about how this plays into all of this. Baluchistan was never really part of British India and didn't really want to be, most Baluch uh, didn't really want to be part of Pakistan. So there's always been a a restive relationship. Balochistan is the largest province in Pakistan by area, but by far the smallest in population. The, it's mostly desert and mountains, um, but it's got a few key resources. It's got some mineral resources. It's got the port of Gwadar, which the Chinese are developing as one end of the China-Pakistan economic corridor, part of China's new, new Silk Road project. Mm -hmm. So it's strategically very important. So talk to me about the CPEC. Uh, is this going to have any impact on this? Because this, is, this attack also comes on the heels of what we saw back in August at the hospital mm -hmm. there. Uh, it, does this become a dicey area to do business? Well, Balochistan is a dicey area to do business at the best of times. Uh, it's uh, with several Baloch nationalist insurgencies, low level, simmering, um, the uh, Afghan Taliban leadership, um, according to many, many reports, headquartered in Quetta uh, for a, a decade now, over a decade. Um, the province itself is split between Baloch tribes in the south and Pashtun tribes in the north. So it's, it's a very, very volatile, volatile region at the best of times. I think it's better, however, to see this attack and the one at the hospital in the context of the Islamic State trying to take over sort of the external leadership of insurgencies in the region from Al-Qaeda. They do things that Al-Qaeda wouldn't do. Um, as evil and awful as they were, Al-Qaeda had a certain moral code. Mm. They wouldn't go after Shiites, um, and they wouldn't attack Pakistan, at least in a way of causing mass casualties among Pakistanis. Um, IS has no such compunctions. Larry Robinson, thanks so much for your analysis. Appreciate it.